Hello YouTube, I hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's video, we're talking about the PowerPoint 2016 exam, and we're looking at the fifth subdomain called Manage Multiple Presentations. Overall, this only accommodates for 5-10% to of the overall exam, so there's not a lot of weight in this category. Let me go ahead and throw up a graphic so you can look at the domain with me. In this video, we're going to cover merge content from multiple presentations and finalize presentations. Let's go ahead and jump into PowerPoint. We're talking about the PowerPoint 2016 exam, and we're looking at the domain called Manage Multiple Presentations. We're looking at the subdomain called Merge Content from Multiple Presentations. The first thing that this subdomain tells us that we should be able to do is to insert slides from another presentation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down through this presentation and go to the very last slide. When you go to insert slides from another presentation, they're going to be placed underneath the slide that you have selected. For this, I want it to be added at the end. So I'm going to select the last slide, which is slide seven. We're on the home tab. We're in the slides group. We're going to click the new slide drop down. And what we want to select is reuse slides. In the reuse slides pane, I'm going to click browse. And I want to select browse file. I'm going to head and map to my folder where I have the documents that I need. On the certification exam, most likely where you'll find these documents is in the documents folder. The file that I want is this one, the additional slides. I'm going to go ahead and click on this first one just one time. And notice it was added to the end of the presentation. If you look at what was inserted within this presentation and what the actual slide looks like, you can see that PowerPoint changed the design for the slide. Had I wanted to keep the formatting from the original slide, all I would need to do is check this box that says keep source formatting. And now when I click on the slide, notice that the slide design was kept when it was brought into the presentation. Once you're done bringing in the slides that you need, you can close out of the pane. This subdomain also tells us that we need to be able to compare two presentations. I'm going to go to the review tab. I'm in the compare group. I'm going to click on compare. I'm going to click the file I need, which is the revised. We'll click merge. The slide I had selected, there's nothing to compare. In the compare group, I can go to the previous or the next from here. For this, we'll click continue. And where it went was slide three, which has some changes. On the right hand side, I can click this and it's telling me there were changes made here. If I check this box. Notice that the title changes to a different formatting and you can go through and look at the different changes that were made. In addition to comparing them, you're going to need to be able to accept or reject changes. I can accept a specific change. I can accept all changes to this slide or I can accept all changes to the presentation. If I click that, I also have the option of rejecting changes. So you can do both. You can accept changes or you can reject them. This subdomain tells us that we should be able to review comments. I'm on the review tab. I'm in the comments group and I have a comment in this document and I can click previous or next to try and find it. Let me close out of the revisions. It found a comment on slide two that says, where is the title for this slide? Now, there are a few things that we can do with this. We can actually reply. Once I'm done replying, I can hit enter and notice it went ahead and it added that. I can delete a reply or a comment by hitting the X with this selected. I can also delete it from here and I have some delete options on the ribbon. And had there been multiple comments throughout this presentation, I can flip through them with the next and previous. If you see this little quotation mark on a slide, there's a comment attached to it. If you don't see that, if you look here in the show comments, if I uncheck the show markup, it won't be visible. So you might need to enable that to see that little quotation mark. And if I click on that, it will open up the comments pane. And then the final thing that this subdomain tells us that we should be able to do is to insert comments. We just looked at finding them, but let's go ahead and add our own. Let's go to slide three. And what we'll do is we'll put our cursor within this title and I'm going to click on new comment. And on the right hand side, I now have the ability to add the comment to the title. When I'm done, I can just click out of the comment to set that text. We're looking at the subdomain called finalize presentations. 
the first thing this subdomain tells us that we should be able to do is to protect a presentation. To do that, let's go to the file tab. And in the backstage view, where we're looking is protect presentation. Some things that we can do are mark this presentation as final. This window says that this presentation will be marked as final and then saved. We'll click OK. This window is just telling us some of the things that the presentation did because we marked it as final. We'll click OK. And we can see that at the very top of our presentation that this has been marked as final. If we click Edit anyway, we have the option to make changes to the presentation again. Let's go back to the backstage view because you could also be asked to encrypt this document with a password, which means somebody couldn't open this presentation unless they had the password to do so. So if we click this, we're prompted to give a password. For this, you'd put in a password and then it would ask you to put the password in again just to verify that, and then it would lock the presentation. For this, we won't actually do this, we'll hit cancel. This subdomain also tells us that we need to be able to inspect a presentation. So we're still in the backstage view and where we're looking is inspect presentation. The big one usually is the inspect document. On this window, we'll select yes. And what we can do is search for specific things. Some of the more commonly searched for things are document properties and personal information, which is our metadata, macros, forms, and ActiveX. Maybe you want to look for presentation notes. On the exam, whatever it's asking you for, just make sure that box is checked so that when you click inspect, you have the option of removing whatever it is that you need to remove. We'll go ahead and remove the document properties and personal information. And now that's gone from the document, we can click close and verify that properties have been removed. In addition to inspecting the document, you could be asked to check for accessibility. And our accessibility checker is telling us that we're missing things like missing alt text on a lot of different things in this presentation and it gives us some tips. So if we wanted to add the alt text, we could go to the keyboard video and then right clicking on it and clicking format video and then adding the alt text. And notice that disappeared from the accessibility checker. We'll close out of these. The final thing that we should look at for inspecting presentations is just checking for compatibility. And what that does is it looks through the presentation to see if it's backwards compatible to previous versions of PowerPoint. And this window will tell us different things that could cause us problems. We'll go ahead and close out of this. This subdomain says that we should be able to proof a presentation. Let's go to the review tab. And in our proofing section, we can do the ABC spelling or the spell check. And we can see that we have some spelling errors in this document. For example, on this slide, we spelt learn wrong. So we can just click change. And now that we've made that change, PowerPoint says we're good to go. We'll click OK. You should also be familiar with the file options under proofing, doing the autocorrect options, being able to add to the autocorrect options through this window. We'll close out of it and we'll cancel this. This subdomain says that we should be able to preserve presentation content. There's actually a lot to this. We'll click file. I have a video in this presentation, and one way to preserve the presentation content is to actually compress the media. We're told that currently 3.1 megabytes are media in this presentation. We have the ability to actually compress it to make it a little bit smaller. We could do presentation quality, internet quality, or low quality. Let's go ahead and select internet quality. And for this, it said that it saved 0.1 megabytes. We'll close out of this. Another thing that falls within this is making sure that things like our fonts stay intact with the presentation. So we'll click Options, click the Save section, and down below, we have the option to embed fonts in the file. And you have two options. You have one best for reducing file size, and then you also have a second one best for editing by other people. This is something you could be asked on the certification exam. You'll know which one to check based upon what the task actually says. The final thing that this subdomain tells us that we should be able to do is to export presentations to other formats. Let's go back to the file tab and we'll click on save as. We'll click browse. For this window, we have the option of changing the file name. We can also change the file save type. Maybe you wanted to choose a previous version of PowerPoint. You have the option for PDF. You can make a video. 
You can also make a JPEG or a picture. There's really a lot within this section, and you could be asked to choose one of these file save types. Let me cancel this. Let's go to the export. Within the export screen, you have things like create a PDF XPS, which is the same option that we just saw on the save screen. But some things to note, you can open the file after publishing. So once you click save, it'll actually open it up in the PDF or XPS document. Then you also have the standard and minimum size options. And then you have options that you can change within here. You can create a video. You could package this presentation for CD. And really, this probably falls more under the preserved presentation content because it linked or embedded items such as video, sound, and fonts will be included in the package. You have change file type which again gives you some of the same options that we saw on that save screen, just a little bit easier to look through. But then you also have the create handouts. Let's go ahead and do that. In this window that popped up, we have some options for setting up our page in Microsoft Word. And so you should look through this. Maybe we want blank lines below the slides. And down below, we have the option of adding to the slides by paste or by paste link. For this, we'll click paste and click OK. It could take a few moments depending on what's in the slides and how long your presentation is. But notice that what it did was it brought in a picture of the slide and then gave some note lines below. We can scroll through this and see our presentation. And then from here, you would save the presentation most likely somewhere within the documents folder or in a folder that the certification test tells you to save it. When my students have worked on something similar to this, not every time did the Word document just pop up on screen. And what I've noticed is that the word icon is actually flashing orange in the taskbar. So if this doesn't just pop up like it did on my screen, check below. It might have opened and you might not have realized it. Mm -hmm.